Good morning, England, and welcome back to the All Seen Eye News. Today, we will be reporting the latest news about Italy and Sweden. How are these countries dealing with the COVID-19 crisis? Are their measures proper? Will this situation have an impact on human relationships? All that and much more on today's program. Two months ago, approved the Italian government a decree which included measures such as avoiding movements across the country and the prohibition on public gathering. Neither could citizens leave their domiciles except for basic needs, and schools and universities were closed, as well as businesses whose services are not essential. On May 4th, have the authorities activated lockdown easing measures. In spite of that, documentation still must be provided to the police. Failure to do so leads to a fine of up to 3,000 euros. Companies and parks were reopened on this day, but Prime Minister Josep Conte stressed that distancing measures will continue and that the use of face masks is mandatory. On the other side of the coin is Sweden, whose measures differ from Italy's in a few significant ways. Firstly, schools have not been shut down, and nor have playgrounds, cafes or gyms. Nevertheless, public gatherings of more than 50 people are banned. Moreover, there is no distancing rules or regulation that forces citizens to remain at home. Lastly, it has not been ordered the closure of any business. But the main difference between these two countries is that Swedish laws are based on voluntary measures and on individual responsibilities, principles on which coronavirus strategy is based. On the contrary, Italian actions are more stringent. Now, from my viewpoint, it cannot be said that Italian measures are better than the Swedish ones, and vice versa, as both adjust to its country's structures, and in both there is and there will still be people dying. However, given the results in Italy, I reckon that following the Swedish strategy is not a bad option. I find that herd immunity is the one thing that could slow down the spread of the virus in the long term, since the vaccine is so far off. Likewise, what the Swedish government is doing can continue doing for a long time, whereas methods like the Italian are not sustainable. There is people likely to oppose these measures, claiming that this lack of protection will bring more infections. Nevertheless, it is estimated that 70% of the world population will eventually be reached by the virus. So, the sooner the population is immunized, the sooner everything will come back to normality. And even so, I would like to sow a seed of doubt for Sweden, as its citizens are doing quite well. Most people are staying at home, domestic train travel has fallen drastically, many businesses have closed, and most of teenagers have been kept at home by their parents. On the other hand, we are talking about a strategy that makes sense for Sweden. But it has to be taken into account that not all societies are the same. And what may work for this country may be a disaster in Italy. In terms of personal relationships, I reckon that society is about to face tough times. Some experts have already spoken about something called social recession. According to a study by the University of Madrid, there is already people experimenting intrusive symptoms and anxiety when they go for a walk or interact with people. However, from my perspective, we must still wait to know more about this as the de-escalating measures take place. To conclude, I would like to send a message of hope. It is true that we are facing the biggest pandemic in this century, but we are more prepared than ever to deal with it. We do not have just material, but also powerful countries willing to cooperate, and this is what will allow us to beat the virus, saving us all. Thanks for watching, see you tomorrow, and do not forget to stay at home.